Kentucky's Tailgate Week. Welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by GEICO. You're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. It's a blackout at Sun Devil Stadium as Arizona State shoots for its first win over a top five team in 21 years as the 6-0 Washington Huskies come calling for Pac-12 after dark. And hi, everybody. I'm Dave Pash alongside Greg McElroy. We'll get to Tom Luganbill in a minute. Well, you called it yesterday before the games even started. Said this was going to be a crazy weekend. We've already had three top ten teams knocked off. Number 11, number 12, almost knocked off. Yeah. Could we have another upset tonight? Washington is a team that has a lot of people back from their playoff run a year ago, and they look pretty good so far this season. And you know about the offensive personnel, Jake Browning and his efficiency. Gaskin at running back. They have a nice one-two punch there. And at wide receiver, Pettis is one of the best in the business. But it's the defense that really makes this Washington team elite. And in particular, these defensive tackles. Vita Vea. Everybody's All-American. You look at the numbers right below. He's an absolute star, likely a first-round pick next April. But it's its counterpart, Greg Gaines, number 99, who doesn't get any type of publicity but should. He's effective, and they're going to be going against an offense tonight, Tom, that has a lot of firepower. Well, it sure does, and that's the chess match. Washington doesn't give up explosive plays on defense, and Arizona State is chock full of them on offense. Quarterback Manny Wilkins, he is connected with Enkeel Harry, number one, the big receiver on the perimeter. This is an offense as it accounted for nine plays of over 40 yards just through the air alone. Expect Arizona State to attack Washington on the perimeter and see if they can get them in space and force Washington to tackle the football. And Tom, Arizona State already with the win over Oregon here at Sun Devil Stadium. Plus, Washington has it won in Tempe since 2001. Kickoff is next. ESPN College Football brought to you by Taco Bell's new crispy chicken quesadilla. A deliciously unexpected pairing at Northwestern Mutual. Northwestern Mutual. We help you live life differently. They passed Greg McElroy and Tom Luganville back in Tempe. Washington uh, taking on Arizona State from Sun Devil Stadium. And time now for our Northwestern Mutual planning for success. The toughest game on Washington's schedule to this point. And in order to get a victory here tonight, they have to have a plan for Arizona State's blitzes on offense. They're going to bring the house. They're going to bring them from all over the place. That's what Todd Graham's always done. And defensively, they have to stop the run. That's what gets Arizona State's offense going. For Arizona State, they have to avoid negative plays. They're going up against a defense that sacked Ross Bowers, the Cal quarterback, last week eight times and led to only naked 40 rushing yards. And then defensively for Arizona State, they cannot give up explosive plays. So many times this year, they've been beaten not only on the ground, but through the air for big chunks of yardage. They cannot allow that tonight against a capable Washington offense. Well, going into this week, there's only one Peterson in this town. Now there's three. Stay with me, Greg. Patrick, <laughs> Adrian, and Absolutely. now Chris. Just for tonight, though, Chris well, Peterson. Arizona Cardinal reference. I yeah. like it. They've won nine straight road games under Chris Peterson. And Todd Graham in his sixth year as the Arizona State head coach. There's been a lot of discussion here locally about his future and whether it's long at Arizona State. This would go a long way, you would think, if they could somehow knock off the Huskies. Arizona State won the toss and deferred. So Washington will start on offense. Brandon Ruiz will kick it deep. Sean McGrew is back for UW. And McGrew is going to take it out from about four yards deep in the end zone. And he gets tackled basically by his own guy at the 17. So Jake Browning, the junior quarterback, and he's thrown five career interceptions against Arizona State. But, man, as you look at his numbers in high school, two-time California Gatorade Player of the Year, his numbers last year and this year, he's got 73 career touchdown passes, 43 last year, 14 this year, and only three interceptions. Stats are gaudy, but it's his understanding of what they're trying to do 
that makes him one of the best quarterbacks in college football. And Miles Gaskin will get the carry here on first down. No running room. Maybe a yard. JoJo Wicker there first for ASU. And Jake's dad, Ed Browning, paid a play quarterback in this conference at Oregon State. So good bloodlines to play this position. Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year finished sixth in Heisman voting last year. He's got a really good supporting cast, and especially with running backs. Gaskin and Coleman make up one of the best one-two punches in college football. Levon Coleman in the backfield with Browning is going to throw a swing pass to Pettis. And Pettis going to lose yardage. That was well defended by Kobe Williams. Arizona State's not very good in the secondary. But if Kobe Williams can step up tonight and they get good play from Chase Lucas, this is a defense that has given up 30 or more points in 11 straight games. That's number one active, but it's mainly because of that secondary. They have to be opportunistic tonight. Can't give up the points, but they also have to give their offense the short field by forcing some mistakes from Jake Brown. Arizona State loves to blitz from anywhere and everywhere and just about every down, but they only rush four here. Browning, his pass broken up, incomplete. It was Kobe Williams again. Pettis the intended receiver, so the Huskies go three and out on their first possession. Outstanding start from this Arizona State defense. They've had their struggles, no denying that. But that's a great way to raise the confidence. And then for Washington, they've started slow on the road to this point of the season, trying to get off to a better start. First drive in the indicator, no improvement there yet. Yeah, all three of their road games, they have not been good in the first half. True freshman Joel Whitford with a good punt. Newsom with the fair catch at the 37-yard line. The quarterback for Arizona State, Manny Wilkins from the Bay Area. He's lived in Las Vegas, Texas, Minnesota, Colorado. He told a story about him getting kicked out of high school as a freshman, had a rough childhood, but he's found a home. Battled through a bunch of injuries last year. Been very good this year. Protected the ball, Greg. Only two interceptions this year. That's been the difference. He's been much smarter with the football. Now the sack numbers are still problematic, but you can see why he emerged as the starting quarterback after a lengthy offseason battle with Blake Barnett, the transfer. Barnett came from Alabama. Here's Kyle Williams on the pass, and it's a gain of seven. No, Manny Wilkins was part of the Elite 11 coming out of high school, guys, but he was lightly recruited, so he earned it based on a ceiling for development and projecting out to the type of player that he's now becoming in this offense. He's athletic. He's got some length. He can throw it, but the thing he's got to do tonight is he's got to stay in rhythm in the passing game. Yeah, they said that's the key with him and this offense for that matter. Here's Balage out in space and a good play defensively. Balage is cut down by Miles Bryant, so only a one-yard gain. Tom talked about staying in rhythm already. The first couple plays, just quick bang-bang throws. One is more like a handoff with the jet sweep there. A quick pass to the perimeter. Trying to run it up the middle on Washington is extremely difficult with those defensive tackles. So if Arizona State's going to have success, it's likely going to be on the outside. Wilkins and an open receiver. It's pulled in for a first down by Jalen Harvey. 18 catches on the season for Harvey. And Arizona State's in Husky territory. Mention Arizona State has not beaten a top five team since 1996, but they do have two wins over top 10 teams in the last four years. UCLA in 2015, Notre Dame in 2014. So this stage not too big for the Devils. Wilkins pitching it to Balage, and Balage at 235 pounds, able to get a gain of three. They like to get him out in space, even though when you look at him, you would think this guy should just hammer it between the tackles. Yeah, at six foot two, 230 pounds, like you alluded to, you'd think he'd be a between the tackle runner, 
But no, he's a perimeter player. Good receiver, can be moved around, can play multiple positions. He's like an H-back, Greg. I mean, he really is. You see him in the slot, he's in the backfield, great ball skills. And Billy Napier, the offensive coordinator, talked about he wanted to get him the ball outside. Here he comes in motion. And they fake it to him and hand it off to Richard. And Demario Richard able to get the first down. Richard, a top 10 running back in terms of rushing yards at Arizona State. He had over 1,000 two years ago. He's a good back. Very capable, decisive, faster than you think, and he finishes runs, which is what I really appreciate when you put on the tape. Go to opening drive for Arizona State from the Washington 37-yard line, and this time Richard is wrapped up by Connor O'Brien in the backfield. Loss of two. Negative play. Washington's so good at creating them because of how talented they are in their front four. Now, Arizona State in a tough spot behind the sticks, trying to get back on track here with a second and long. On second and long, Wilkins with time, and it's pulled in at the 31 yard line by Nikhil Harry. It's 35 catches on the year for Harry. We were down on the field watching him before the game, and we've been at, you know, over the last two years, Greg, working together on uh, all these SEC schools, Big 12, Big 10. He, he's the real deal. He's as good as anybody running we've seen. He's a stud, an absolute stud. And what's interesting enough, he reminds me a little bit of Larry Fitzgerald. Very sure-handed and a massive catch radius. And how about this? They shift him into the Wildcat here on third down and four. And bring Williams into the backfield to run the option. And Harry able to break a couple tackles still going. What great effort by Nikhil Harry to get the first down. Are you kidding me? He should have been tackled four different times in the backfield. Wow. I mean, this kid is so special. He's a great receiver, but when they use him in this package, he's an effective runner, too. Wilkins back in there at the quarterback spot, hands it off. It's Bellage. That time they ran him between the tackles, and he gets close to five yards. No, Greg, Arizona State's given this Washington team an awful lot to have to deal with on this first series. We've seen multiple personnel groupings, lots of shifts. We've seen a receiver, Nikhil Harry, who's never been in the Wildcat before, shift into the Wildcat. This is a lot to digest right now. Nice game plan so far for ASU. Actually marked his knee down to the 24, so three-yard pickup. Second and seven. Wilkins keeping it. And down to the 21-yard line. Well, you saw the two guys, the shot of the two guys running off the field for Washington on that previous play. You want those two guys on the sideline, Vita Vea and Greg Gaines. Vea, as you mentioned, a likely first-round draft pick. The guy's a, a, a freak show. Uh, he runs a 4840, and he's 350 <laughs> pounds. And Greg Gaines... Not far behind in terms of uh, ability and size. They are extremely disruptive, but even the backups have had moments with a lot of production this year. But a five-minute drive for Arizona State. Wilkins on the rollout here in third down and five. He'll keep it, and Wilkins has the first down. Planted at the 14-yard line by McIntosh, but it's an eight-yard run. Tremendous decision by Manny Wilkins right there. Nothing there. See if I can make it with my legs. He gets it. You see the incredible numbers in the red zone this year. Swing pass in the flat and maybe a one-yard pickup. Harvey on the catch, a second grab already. You saw that 18 of 18 in the red zone, 15 touchdowns, good for seventh in the country. I love what Billy Napier is doing to this point, the offensive coordinator for ASU, getting the stars involved. You saw Balaj get a couple touches, Richard's gotten a touch, Harry's gotten a touch, a carry, and a, a reception using the star power that they have on offense here in Tempe. Remember, Washington only gives up 10 points per game. Here's Williams bouncing off one defender, and able to get back to the line of scrimmage, third down and long, coming up. 
Billy Napier has been a lot of places. He was an offensive coordinator early in his career, 29 years old at Clemson, was let go and kind of had to start over again a little bit as an offensive analyst at Alabama, then got back into being a position coach. Todd Graham gives him an opportunity here, and he's brought a lot of wrinkles, a lot of innovation to this offense. See what he calls here, Tom, third and long, 14th play of the drive from the 13-yard line of Washington. Wilkins with time, dumps it off to Balazs inside the 10. He'll come up short of the line to gain. So fourth and one, you've got three points here. Do you take it or do you roll the dice? I think you're playing against the top five team in the country and you have to take points when they're available to you. But it looks as though they disagree with me. They're going with Greg, the personnel that's running out on the field. I mean, it's right at a yard here on fourth down. Yeah, Coach uh, Napier and uh, Coach Graham over here, there was no hesitation on what they were doing. Not even a little bit. Well, that's Todd Graham. He's, he's willing to roll the dice on every down. Fourth and one. Wilkins to pass, and it's caught by Harry. He doesn't get the end zone, but he does have a first down. When you got a weapon like that, why not go for it? I love the call because of how good Washington is right in the middle of their defense. Hey, win one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Give it to your big six foot four, 220 pound wide receiver with momentum and he can fall forward for the first down. Great play call and great execution by Billy Napier and this ASU offense respectively. They've chewed up over eight minutes on this drive. This will be the 16th play. Wilkins rolling out. Boy, it looked like Washington was offside, and there comes the flag, and Wilkins wisely throws it away. No foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback was out of the pocket. But again, a penalty marker on the far side. It was dropped late, but it was clear that Washington jumped into the neutral zone. Offside, defense number 27. Half the distance to the goal. Replay, first down. Well, if you're going to jump offside, make sure you do so when the offense only gains a half yard. So I guess right. you can't fault them for trying to get a head start. Yeah, half the distance to the goal, they moved it about three inches. <laughs> but they get the replay first down. Here's Balazs into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona State. Penalty marker is down. It looked like the Huskies did it again. That was an impressive drive by Arizona State. You guys talked about their firepower in the open right on cue. Offside, defense number 99. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. Fifth rushing touchdown for Balage. He had a game last year where he had eight touchdowns. Eight in one game. Brandon Ruiz, a true freshman, replacing the great Zane Gonzalez, who won the Groza Award last year. 16 play drive capped by Balazs one yard touchdown run Ruiz puts it through it is seven nothing Sun Devils Wilkins and the Devils hoping to pull the upset Todd Graham says I don't even need to look I know we score Kick off your week six with NFL Sunday countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Randy Moss will break down the best catches from today's college football action. And you got Moss. How about Daryl Langham? He did it again. We saw it last week against Florida State, the Miami receiver, with a big catch to help the Hurricanes get the win and stay unbeaten. 16 play drive for Arizona State. And on the ensuing kickoff, they boom it deep, and Washington has to take it a knee out to the 25. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And in part by Mitsubishi Motors, a century of innovation. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by GEICO, part of Dos Equis Tailgate Week. There's the Pat Tillman statue, the new Tillman Tunnel. We had a chance to tour the facilities yesterday. Beautiful new 
uh, renovations here. They've made $300 million in improvements to Sun Devil Stadium and the Student Athlete Center. The last phase will be completed in 2019. Seven nothing Arizona State leads second possession for Washington starting on the Husky 25 yard line. Three top 10 teams have been upset over the last 24 hours. We have number four tonight. Browning will hand it off and a big running lane. Levon Coleman all the way past the 45 yard line at 20 yard pickup. Just trying to impose their will along the line of scrimmage. You see Coleman, just a standard power play, right up the middle. And there's nothing but green grass in front of him. It's a good tackle in the back end by Arizona State. But once again, Arizona State gets hit for a big run and a nice drive start for Washington. They gave up over 300 rushing yards to, to Love of Stanford a couple of weeks ago. That pass deflected incomplete Christian Sam got a hand on it underneath second and ten nice play by Christian Sam he's working and following the eyes of Jake Browning vacates his zone to drop underneath the intended receiver and gets a hand on it nicely done by the linebacker They're going to run Gaskin off the left side. Hit at the point of attack and dragged down by A.J. Latu. So it's third and long for Washington. Greg, you mentioned the slow starts on the road for the Huskies this year. At Rutgers, they were leading by three. Colorado by three and Oregon State by seven. Now, they ended up blowing out two of those three teams. This is not unusual is the point. No, it's not because when you're a top five team and you wear the target like Washington does after the success they had last year, some teams are going to come out and they're going to throw the kitchen sink at you defensively. The last loss was against Alabama in the college football playoff. Won the Pac-12 last year. Third and eight, Browning's pass is pulled in but well short of the line to gain. Aaron Fuller tackled at the 49 of Arizona State. Fourth down and four. And Washington will punt it and try to pin the Sun Devils. They've got a very good punter. Tell you, Greg, I, I think Washington is a little confused right now, given that that was one of the few downs we've seen Arizona State actually pressure. They've been dropping, not giving up the big play, which has been a problem for them. And I don't think this is what Washington is expecting from Arizona State on defense. Joel Whitford, who committed via Skype with, uh, from his farm in Australia, had a bunch of cows around him when he made his announcement. Punts beautifully down to the seven yard line. Arizona State will have the ball actually on its nine when we come back. Our week six Monday night football matchup. It's the Colts and the Titans from Nashville. Our coverage starts with Monday night countdown at six Eastern on ESPN. The game is also available on ESPN two in Spanish. Dosecki's tailgate week. Surprised Luganville's actually in the stadium and not on the stands, <laughs> just giving his reports. I think Tom has some Dos Equis with his name on it waiting around for after the game. I'm thirsty. <laughs> Wilkins on the rollout here in first down. And Harry, wow, what a catch, man. Got that foot down, pulled it in. Just a yard short of the first down. But again, we just see an incredible skill set on display tonight. Look at this. Look how high he is, first of all. He makes it look easy. That's the craziest part. And they pick up the first down on second and short with Demario Richard. Great job on their opening drive. Featuring different players within their offense, particularly their stars like Harry, like Williams, Balaj, and Richard, all gotten touches early for Arizona State to keep this Washington defense guessing. Bring pressure off the far side and run into the near side of a big hit by Bartlett on Richard, upended. No gain. 
Manny Wilkins on the night so far, nine of nine. Now they've all been short passes, but Washington's defense, they don't give up big plays. They've only allowed nine plays of 20 yards or more. So you're going to have to put long drives together to beat them, but Arizona State's already done that once. Given the fact that Arizona State is sack prone too, they want to get the ball out of Manny Wilkins' hands. It's exactly what they've done. High percentage completions and eliminate the possibility of any negatives. Here's second and nine. Richard finding a hole. Nice run. Out to the 27-yard line. Almost got tackled in the backfield, but just waited till the hole opened up. Shot through it, and it'll put him in third and five. Greg, this is the first time we've seen number 50, number 99 in the game on this series for Washington defensively. Fresh legs on third down. They were huffing and puffing on that last drive. We saw him on the sideline. Wilkins with all day to throw, and Harry couldn't come up with it that time. Austin Joyner in coverage, and so Arizona State will have to punt. That means Dante Pettis has a chance at history. Eight career punt returns for touchdowns, two of 80 yards or more. It's amazing anybody even kicks it to him. Yeah, it's, he's unbelievable. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm a quarterback, so special teams, it's like a foreign language to me. I don't understand it, but I made it a point to watch those returns from Dante Pettis. He can take the air out of the stadium in a heartbeat with a big return. Michael Sleep Dalton is the punter. He tries to kick it away from Pettis, and it checks up at the 30-yard line. So not terrible. 43-yard punt and no return. I think Arizona State will take that. Again, we talked about the first half struggles. Only nine points per game on the road for Washington in the first half of games, but then they make adjustments at halftime, they settle things down, and they open things up. And if you watch teams that, that are facing them, you see tendency breakers. You see things that they're doing against Washington that they don't do against anybody else because Washington is the team to beat in the Pac-12 over the last couple years. Browning, going to get hit, loses the ball, but recovered by Will Disley. Pressure from several Sun Devils led by Rennell Wren. They've moved guys around, different positions. A lot of these guys are playing because of injuries and the like, and they did a good job getting pressure. Yeah, they've had to move some pieces around like you alluded to. They lost their best pass rusher in Karan Crump. Now they're just trying to find their most athletic front four. Trying to put guys in positions where they can actually win individual matchups. They like their matchups between their defensive tackles and the Washington guards. Right there is a win for Arizona State. Caleb McGarry fell on the ball. So they're just going to run Gaskin here, get out of their own end, try to get positive yards, but they don't. JoJo Wicker blows that play up. It'll be third down and long. And an injured offensive lineman for Washington. It's their left tackle, Trey Adams. First team all Pac-12 a year ago. He's a big boy. In some obvious pain. Six foot eight. Very athletic. On the edges of their offensive line is Washington. Certainly hope that everything with Trey Adams is okay. You got 6'8 at left tackle and 6'7 at right tackle. And Caleb McGarry. It's third and 26 right now for Washington. And their blindside quarterback protector out for this play. Maybe oh. more. Can you see that right knee. Just buckle awkwardly. Mm. Oh man, you see him grab it, not able to put very much weight on it. Man, you just hate to see that for that young man. Greg, they've lost a lot of pieces on offense to injury. Chico McClatcher out for the year. He was their number two receiver behind Dante Pettis. They lost several really good players in their secondary. Three guys who were drafted high last year from that playoff team. 
And there's no play call in the book for this. Third and 26. And so they just hand it off. Gaskin is trying to get a few back to give their punter some room. Tayshawn Smallwood on the takedown of the 19. A first quarter dominated by Arizona State in all three phases. It's 7-0 Sun Devils looking to pull the upset here at home. You know, Washington does not play USC this season as they almost, yeah, they do get the punt block at the 20 yard line. And so Arizona State will have it at the 35 of Washington. Hodges at 6 7 got back there, got a piece of that punt. And you can see right on the edge. Untouched. Now I'm no expert, like I said, <laughs> when it comes to punt protection, but I would imagine that you have to account for the guy that's six foot seven. <laughs> Block the long guy. That's hard to kick over. <laughs> Clearly a bust in protection from Washington, a rare mistake from them in the kicking game. Arizona State will run it on first down. Balazs trying the middle of the field. There's nothing there. Ryan Bowman in there on the stop for Washington. A walk-on who's been one of their best players on defense, and he's a freshman for Washington this year. And Washington there defensively saying, hey, we've been dropping back, letting Arizona State move it. Let's dictate some. They brought pressure. One of the few times you'll see him bring five throughout the course of the game. Ryan's older brother. Shane was in on that stop as well. Here's Wilkins trying to go to the perimeter and oh, what a dangerous play there. Now it was a forward pass, so it's incomplete. So third down and nine. Very dangerous play right there and a great job by Washington's defense on these first two snaps after sudden adversity because of the blocked kick stepping up. And enforcing their will a little bit and covering down. They go five wide here. And a timeout called by Washington. That leaves Chris Peterson with two for the remainder of the half. Now you said several times that, you know, Washington is used to this poor starts on the road. And obviously everybody's giving them their best shot. But, you know, Arizona State, you and Tom were talking about this the last couple days. They've got some firepower. You know, last year they were 5-1. And, and this year they're 2-3. And, and some people think this team's actually better than last year's team. I think they're the best 2-3 and three team in the country. That was, of course, before Florida State won today, who is okay. also 2-3. Yeah. and three. Yeah. But this Arizona State team, particularly offensively, with the personnel that they have, they can put a lot of stress on the opposing defense. They have a first round wide receiver. They have a capable one two punch at running back. They have a quarterback that's been playing very smart with the football. And their offensive line at times has been a nice cohesive unit under the leadership of the new offensive line coach Rob Sales. So they pose some problems. That's Balazs leaving the backfield third down and nine. Wilkins rolling that way. Looking downfield, still on the move, throws it deep, and it hit the pylon trying to go to Balage. So it's fourth down, and now Brandon Ruiz is a true freshman, but he's already made a 52-yard field goal this season. This will be about that here. Got to credit Washington there, guys, to have that quick turnaround, get on the field defensively after a block kick, you're backed up to force a field goal, and one that's not overly high percentage. Outstanding job from Coach Kwiatkowski's crew. But again, Ruiz has the leg. Originally committed to Alabama. 
But he's from Gilbert, which is about 20 minutes away. And this one slices in. It's good from 52, the second one he's hit from that distance this season. For those of you that play golf at home, that's the beautiful butter cut. <laughs> right inside the upright, big kick from Ruiz. Back here in Tempe, folks getting ready for kickoff about an hour ago before the sun went down here in Tempe. They like what they've seen so far as Arizona State leads 10-0, the largest deficit that Chris Peterson, Jake Browning, and the Huskies have faced this season. 6-0, 3-0 in the Pac-12. Short kickoff taken on the two-yard line by McGrew. He makes it to about the 24 as we check in with Adnan in the studio. Let's go, Jake! So many great running backs this year. I mean, last year you had Dalvin Cook, Leonard Fournette, Saquon Barkley, obviously Fournette and Cook are in the league. You got Bryce Love this year. Miles Gaskin for Washington's got 559 yards this season, but it's a pass on first down to Pettis. And he's stopped in the open field by Jamarcus Rhodes. Been very impressed with the plan that defensive coordinator Phil Bennett has had for ASU's defense at this point. Mixing coverage, playing some man, playing some zone, mixing in a pressure here and there. And that group, after the bye week, man, they're tackling so much better than they did in the first five games. Got its first season here. Todd Graham no longer calls the defense. He did as the head coach his first four years. Here's LeVon Coleman, and he gets smashed at the line of scrimmage. Wren and Sam team up on the takedown. Third down coming up. And this is a group that has struggled to this point of the season. Not just giving up a lot of production, but production in chunks. Big plays over and over and over again. And this group is not very deep. Their offense forces them to be on the field quite a bit. That's something Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator, understands, though. Remember, he was at Baylor under Art Bryles with those high up-tempo, high-octane attacks for so many years in Waco. All the shifts and motions for Washington to get set for third down and six. Pressure coming, Browning goes down, back at the 17-yard line. Tayshawn Smallwood and A.J. Latu. It's an 11-yard loss. You see Tayshawn Smallwood over here on the right-hand side, working around the edge and picking up a big play. He is the most active defender up front now that Karan Crump is out for the season. Very gifted player, and his teammate Latu helping him out to clean it up. See if they block here. Remember the last punt got blocked. That time Whitford got rid of it quicker. It checks up again, though. Boy, there's a spot now twice that's been hit, and the ball just dies at the 34-yard line. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA, and White Famous, the outrageous new original comedy series starring Jay Farrell, only on Showtime. A brand new 118,000 square foot student athlete building, part of $300 million in improvements to Sun Devil Stadium. That giant video board there was added this year. The last phase will be completed in 2019. Arizona State up 10 nothing. The last time they beat a top five team was one of the best Arizona State seasons in history, 1996. Jake the Snake Plumber, they knocked off number one Nebraska. Ended up going to the Rose Bowl where they lost to Ohio State. 
And they're in command of this one against the fifth-ranked team in the country. And a pitch here to Kyle Williams, and he gets nothing brought down to the point of attack. We talked earlier a little bit about the troubled childhood for Manny Wilkins. His father, Manny Sr., was in prison when Manny was growing up. Later passed away from a drug overdose, and Manny said he was very angry about his dad growing up, so he got into trouble. Again, he was in a tough neighborhood to begin with, said he would come home, his house would be robbed. There'd be people in his house just taking stuff multiple times. Lived in several different cities. But he really has found Arizona State to be home as he puts another one on the money. Close to a first down is Harry. You have to be impressed with how Manny Wilkins has answered the critics this year. Has it been perfect? By no means. Quarterbacks are judged by wins and losses, and the reality is two and three. But the improvement from a decision-making standpoint, from a confidence standpoint, and leadership as well, he's a different player than 2016. Wilkins in trouble, had to get rid of it, and did the smart thing there, just threw it at the feet of the receiver. It was Miles Bryant coming on a blitz that got to Wilkins. And that play right there is an excellent play. Washington has the perfect defense called. They bring pressure off the right-hand side. He's trying to hit Harry. Harry gets hit. Wilkins makes the smart decision to throw it down. Takes a big hit as a result, but a good loss, good incompletion, good throw away. Yeah, you saw him grab the back of his head. Head hit the turf hard. Swing pass. Williams able to break a tackle. They really like Kyle Williams. They think he's very talented. He picks up seven yards there. Real smart kid, too. Wants to be an orthopedic surgeon when he's done playing football. Yeah, he's a genius, they said. <laughs> they say that he, he's the smartest guy in the room when the entire team is there, and that includes the coaches and maybe some of the administration. <laughs> the guy's a genius. He ain't very big, but he is a jet, guys. When you look at Nikhil Harry on the outside and you look at him on the inside, this is a very difficult skill group for Arizona State, or excuse me, for Washington to handle on the offensive side for the Sun Devils. And what, what if they go down and score and it's 17 nothing? Does Washington have enough to come back from that? Third and three, this is a huge play here, and it's Harry they go to, it's gonna be close. And he made that catch, got drilled by two guys, and they haven't spotted the ball yet. Harry even bumped the linesman a little bit, like, hey, get over closer to that 46-yard <laughs> line. And this is on Harry. I mean, you can't run a three-yard route. I thought he got it, though, Greg. It, I think that spot's a little short. I mean, that... I, mean, I thought his route was a little short, but it looked like he got enough. You're right, though, Greg, though. He's got to be aware of that. He's got to understand where the sticks are, yep. what he needs to gain, and go a yard past that. He cut it right at the sticks, and as a result, there's a measurement, and you leave it up to the officials, which is not what you want if you're an offensive football team. But that's the next step for Harry, right? Figuring those things out. They, they were on him a little bit about his conditioning. They thought he was a little heavy uh, in the offseason. Obviously, he looks in great shape now as he's short but again i thought that was, i'm with you i thought that was a poor spot see if uh, this is reviewed further upstairs it's always so difficult to overturn the spot but if you see the nose of the football it looks as though the nose of the football is a decent way past well, and Greg, that you know what? Yard line. You know what? It's a lot easier to overturn that when you're out in space as opposed to, you know, an inside clogged up run that you think is an inch or two short. The only problem is when he turns, you can't see the ball, right? And they won't overturn it if they, they, they can't see the ball and have 100% certainty that the call on the field is wrong. And let's, let's assume it's fourth down and one, guys. Short of the line to gain. The previous play is now under replay review. So let's just live in the speculative here. We'll talk when we come back if he gets the first down. So the ruling on the field that he did not get the first down stands. Arizona State will go for it on fourth down. Good decision, bad decision. I think it's a bad decision. You have all the momentum in the world right now and you can pin Washington who hasn't done anything offensively 
deep in their own end. And you're playing great defense. You are. I, I don't agree with this. I'm with you guys, but it is about three inches that you need to get. And I think Todd Graham, he's a gambler. He's he, going to go oh, for he it. he is. There's no denying that. Todd Graham is not afraid to take chances, but you're going against two of the best defensive tackles in the country. And Wilkins on the quarterback sneak gets it. His go for his center, A.J. McCollum, was checking with Adnan Virk. All right, so SC able to survive. Been an interesting year for the Trojans. Here's that play again. They call this the Sparky. All the, the Arizona State fans don't like it when you call it the Wildcat. Based on uh, their enemy in Tucson. And it's uh, Harry running it to the far sideline. Doesn't get much. Pushed out of bounds by Jordan Miller. Maybe a yard on the play. Now you think that Sparky package, if you will, is only to run the football. That is not the case. Harry does have a touchdown pass this year and threw a beautiful pass just a couple weeks ago. So Washington's got to be alert when he's in the backfield, not only for the run, but for the throw. Look at this 30 second play. Washington's had fewer than 20. Wilkins, here's Williams. Great job to keep his feet. He eventually went down. Well, they're going to spot him at the 43 and say that he did not put his hand down. His knee was down as well, so only a gain of one. Ezekiel Turner on the stop, so you got third and long. Yeah, and you see this Washington defense. I mean, they're dialed in now. That first drive, 16 plays. Arizona State right down the field, but they've been playing well these last couple series. Let's see if Washington blitzes here. Let's go, John! ASU three of seven on third down. Wilkins with time, going to send it downfield, and it's caught at the 10-yard line by Harvey. What a throw by Manny Wilkins. Right on the money on that deep ball. 33 yards. This might be one of his best throws. Deep down the right sideline, time and time again, he hits it right on the money. That time was no exception. What a beautiful throw and a good job by Harvey stacking the defender and making the catch. Now you got a chance to really make it difficult. They're going to blitz here as Richard did not get the handoff and Wilkins was tackled. Man, if he handed that ball off to DeMario Richard, it's a touchdown. Instead, Bryant and Bowman tackle Wilkins back. What a great job by number 55, Ryan Bowman. It looked as though he was going to chase the running back. Then all of a sudden, he makes a split decision and tackles the quarterback. Great job by the walk-on. It's a seven-yard loss. Now they bring Kyle Williams in to run the Sparky slash Wildcat. Second and goal. And Williams running it, and he gets stood up. Maybe one yard. Azeem Victor was there, first-team All-Pac-12 linebacker a year ago. Well, that was a huge first down play for Washington's defense. Now it's third and goal on the 13. Such a tough spot to be in here. Of course, Arizona State has been money in the red zone to this point. But it's tough. I think in this situation, you got to go to your star. He's at the top of your screen in Nikhil Harry. Wilkins throwing it to Harry out in space at the 10, turns up field. Got drilled out of bounds by Ezekiel Turner. They will spot him out actually back at the seven. Look at so that. You, have to, you have to take three here. You can't go for it on fourth down from there. What a great block by Demario Richard on the perimeter there. Really well executed by the Sun Devil. But you're right, Dave. Greg, three points here. You have all the momentum. You've taken so much time off the clock. I know there's a long way to go, but we were watching the Cal-Washington State game last night. This, this kind of has the same feel. You kept waiting for Washington State to, to do something in that game, and they never did, and they got blown out. It's good from 25 for Brandon Ruiz, and the Sun Devils lead it 13 to nothing.
Taco Bell is a proud partner of the college football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections and passionate fans like these at games all season long. They've had a lot to celebrate about here in the first half. Arizona State has dominated 13-0 behind the play of Manny Wilkins, who's outplayed Jake Browning so far. Washington has run 13 plays. Nine of them have been for two yards or less. And they've gone three and out three times already. And look at their last six plays. Negative 14 yards. That's what Washington did defensively last week to Cal. Held them to 93 yards and negative 40 rushing. It'll be a touchback. Here's Adnan. You know, give Rich Rod a little credit here. He, he's an excellent offensive coach, and Arizona's playing well so far this season. See if the Huskies respond. A top five team. They've won nine straight road games, undefeated on the year. College football playoff participant last year. Browning under center will pitch it here to Gaskin, who is yet to get going. It's another negative play. Loss of one. Kick off your week six with Sunday NFL countdown 10 a.m. Eastern time. Randy Moss will have You Got Moss segment looking at the best catches from today. Desmond Howard will join countdown. Takes a trip to Kansas City to talk to Tyreek Hill. Countdown also streaming live in the ESPN app. How about the job this defense has done on Miles Gaskin? 1,300 rushing yards each of the last two years. On pace for that again this year. But not tonight. He's struggling. Lost one. Browning throws into traffic. It is knocked away. Incomplete. Adams broke it up. Lenny is the intended receiver. Third and 11. This is a big play right here for Washington. Obviously, great coverage on second down from Arizona State. I mean, they've been locked down to this point of the game. Washington struggling to get anything going. Just 11 yards of offense so far, and there's under five minutes to play in the second quarter. Got to hurry it up here. Play clock down to two. Browning back to throw. Everybody covered, and Browning gets away from one man running in circles. But he's got an open receiver. It's LeVon Coleman. Coleman turns it back. Has the first down and more. Mistake by Arizona State. First of all, leaving Coleman, then failing to make the tackle. And it's a 21-yard gain on third and 11. What a great play by Jake Browning. He doesn't panic. Knows he has a lot of time. And finds Coleman for the conversion. Coleman again, this time on the ground, picks up two to midfield. No, Greg, that last play notwithstanding, you know, one of the criticisms of this Arizona State defense is they've been so high risk, high reward with their pressure package is that they give up the big plays. This changeup has been so much better here tonight. Long throw for Browning. Nice tackle in the open field on true freshman Hunter Bryant by Adams. That's the first time that we've seen Bryant targeted. He had nine catches at a touchdown last week. True freshman. He's going to be a star. He is so explosive at tight end. He reminds me of Evan Ingram. It's good. The, the like first that. round pick from Ole Miss now with the New York Giants. I think that's the ceiling that Hunter Bryant has. He's just now starting to scratch the surface of his potential. And it's Washington in four down territory here. Down 13-0. Browning rolling out. Going to try to throw it back. And Arizona State able to get the takedown of the backfield. It's D.J. Calhoun. Now because you lost four yards, you got a punt. They covered that throwback perfectly. That's a great job by Arizona State's defense. For all the good that they've done over the course of Todd Graham's tenure, you mentioned how high risk, high reward they are. They make a lot of mistakes as a result of that high risk. There, they stay at home on the throwback screen. Nothing's there. They rally to make the tackle in the backfield. Big play.
Whitford kicks this thing way out of bounds. We'll see where it's spotted. The official still walking. And he stops at the 19 yard line. Next Saturday, it's a big one. Game day will be there. Saturday night football from Beaver Stadium, Penn State, and Michigan. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC, also on the ESPN app. Boy, Michigan just doesn't look the same with John O'Corn at quarterback. We had them last year, and they struggled at home against Indiana. Today, on the road in Indiana, they struggle. Lost to Michigan State, obviously, last week. Just get by winning in overtime this week. Yeah, their offense just has really struggled to get going and really had a hard time in the red zone and you know Penn State they lost by 39 to Michigan yes. last year you think they've had that game circled think about that that team early in the season losing like that and then having the, the kind of second half that Penn State did a year ago picking up where it left off this year Kalen Balaj on the carry Tevis Bartlett on the stop but after a gain of five Let's go, first down production so important to Arizona State's offense because of how good Washington is pushing the pocket and rallying they have to be efficient on first down and to this point of the game they've been pretty good I know they Washington's been a great second half team on the road but man right now they do not look like a top five team and here they give up another huge run Balage gets the first down. Arizona State with all of its timeouts. They've got a kicker who's already made a 52-yarder. Looking for more points to close out the half. Now Wilkins will throw to Williams. Gets a great block, and Williams grabbed at the ankles at the 44-yard line. Otherwise, he might be out the gate. JoJo McIntosh with a big stop after a 14-yard pickup just see how explosive Williams is with the ball in his hands any way you can get him involved in the short passing game and then you watch him run he's an exciting player to watch Greg you know you look at the tempo of this Arizona State team three one five three as they reset the clock there they haven't been up tempo but then once the ball is snapped and we talked about this coming on air Manny Wilkins and everything they do within this offense is quick that ball is out it's on the perimeter and Billy Napier the offensive coordinator spoke to us about how they had to attack the edges they didn't think they matched up well between the tackles but because of the misdirection and the edge stuff it's now opened up some of the inside stuff as well and they got plenty of time here Tom they can manage the clock they can run the football oh huge collision in the backfield between Williams and Balage. And it's Williams taking out his own guy, and they lose two yards. Oh, my goodness. That could have been disastrous on the handoff. I mean, how often do you see that ball pop out and result in a fumble? Man, they got to time up that jet sweep motion. It's rare when you're on the receiving end like that of a hit by your own teammate that's only 175 pounds. And that's the biggest hit delivered to Bellage tonight. <laughs> Second and 12. Richard hit by his own guy again, this time tight end getting blocked back into the defender. Bartlett on the stop, so now it's third down and 14. Surprised Washington doesn't call a timeout. Yeah, you got to be smart here if you're Arizona State. Well, why not Washington? If you're Chris Peterson, you got two left. Why not take one? Because you could get the ball back still with 30, 40 seconds left. Yeah, I don't understand that, especially knowing how good their return game is the likelihood that they could get really good field position is extremely high I'm surprised he's not taking a time out here to give his offense a little more time to work or maybe your punter kicks it out of bounds because he's so afraid of kicking it to Pettis and he kicks it 15 yards Arizona State just took the clock down at the 29 seconds and called the timeout here's Adnan All right, and I don't mean to usurp 
the guys that are going to talk about that. But let me get Greg and Tom in here quickly on biggest takeaway from this uh, weekend so far. That, that anything's possible in college football. <laughs> As if you needed any more evidence. You and I and Tom and our crew, we were on hand last year in Clemson, South Carolina, when Syracuse came to town. Woo! And it got <laughs> ugly quick. Oh, yeah. It was 54-0 when the clock struck zero. It could have been 100 to nothing. Sure enough, fast forward one year now into 2017, Syracuse pulls off the stunner of the season. And from what I understand, there are a lot of Syracuse alums in broadcasting that were uh, pretty thrilled with uh, that <laughs> win last night. I don't know any, that's for sure. Here's third and 14, Wilkins rolling out, and he throws it away. 22 seconds left, Arizona State will punt. Right there, Wilkins. Why throw it away? All right, just go down. Go down. And I know that your sack numbers are up. You're talking about getting rid of the ball quick. You're telling the kid the entire game, the entire week leading up, hey, you got to get rid of it. You got to get rid of it. Right there, he gets rid of it when he doesn't need to. As a result, 22 seconds come off the clock, or 22 seconds remain on the clock, and Washington has two timeouts with the best return man in college football history back there getting ready to return a punt. Eight career punt returns for touchdowns, tying the NCAA record. Three this year. And they again kick it nowhere near him. Out of bounds with 16 seconds left. And you would imagine, based on managing the clock by Chris Peterson here, is they'll mark it at the 25, that he'll still just take a knee. This week's college football rankings brought to you by AT&T. Three top ten teams have gone down. Auburn, Washington State last night, and as you mentioned, Clemson number two. Plus number 11, Miami. Number 12, Oklahoma survives scares. Alabama right now, you mentioned this uh, before we came on the air. I mean, they're, they're the only sure thing in college football right now. Yeah, they're a lead. And you're not even mentioning number 13. That survived by the hair of their chinny-chin-chin chin because they stopped a two-point conversion with USC. Yeah. Yep. They're going to get it in the hands of Pettis. He's very dangerous with the ball in his hands, but a terrific open field tackle by Jamarcus Rhodes. Are you guys with me on this? Or Washington doesn't look like a top five team. They have in the second half most of the time. So a lot of football left to be played. Arizona State first time leading in half against a top five team in over a decade. 13-0 Adnan at the break. You're watching Dos Equis Tailgate Week. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by GEICO. You're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. Washington held to 42 yards of total offense in that first half, and they were shut out for the first time since 2015 in a loss to Stanford. Andy Wilkins was sharp in that first half for ASU, 13-0. Sun Devils, Dave Pash, Greg McElroy, and Tom Luganville in a minute. Well, Greg, let's give Arizona State a lot of credit yeah. uh, the way they played in the first half. If you're Washington, if you're a Husky fan, are you worried right now? I mean, you've come back from deficits or, or have games at, at halftime. We've only had a three-point lead this half, but that was a bad half. No, they didn't play well at all, and it's in large part due because when you wear the target like Washington does as the college football playoff team that they were a year ago, you're going to get tendency breakers, and that's exactly what Arizona State has done defensively to this point. Arizona State pressures the quarterback with blitzes. That's what they've always done under Todd Graham. Not the case today. You see seven dropping back into coverage and nowhere for Jake Browning to go with the football. The reason why they're able to drop back is because they're winning one-on-one -on -one matchups up front with their defensive linemen. They've sacked and harassed Jake Browning over the course of the entire game. He has to play better. The people around him have to play better. And Tom, I've been very impressed with what Arizona State's doing. They just got to keep doing what they've been doing at this point. They really do. It's very clear in their study of Washington that they felt, even though Arizona State is undersized on defense, their quickness was superior to Washington. So we've become accustomed to seeing Arizona State, you know, sell out, you know, give them the kitchen sink, and then you know what they do? They give up 40-yard plays, 50-yard plays. Well, 
Now you start dropping eight, Greg, and you start making Washington earn it. And I don't think Washington was prepared to see an entirely different philosophy. And if they didn't go into the locker room and make some adjustments for what Arizona State's doing now on defense, then they're going to continue to struggle to move the football here in the second half. And they have to find answers against that coverage, Tom, and they have to do a better yep. job up front. The challenge and the onus, frankly, is on this Washington offensive line. They got beat at the point of attack yep. multiple times in the first half, not just in the passing game where they've harassed Jake Browning, but to this point, both running backs, Coleman and Gaskin for Washington, they've had a really difficult time getting going. They've really only popped one run, and that was Coleman on the second series of the game, the fourth offensive snap for Washington. So they got to pick it up in the trenches if they're going to get back into this game. And with the three sacks, that's where uh, you, you have the, the only the one rushing yard for Washington. And they lost their left tackle, Trey Adams, a first-team All-Pac-12 performer in that first quarter. Andrew Kirkland was filling in for him. And Arizona State can get the ball to start the third quarter, and the Sun Devils will have it on their 25. So again, we talked about this a lot. Washington has done this before this year, not to this level, but they've had struggles in the first half of games on the road at Rutgers, at Colorado, at Oregon State. Now, they blew out two of those three teams. But Todd Graham is 33-3 at Arizona State when leading at the half. And again, this is a Sun Devil offense that can score. The question right now is, can Washington score? If you're Arizona State offensively, just keep trying to establish the line of scrimmage in the run game, keep getting the ball out on the perimeter to your playmakers, and be efficient on first down. They were successful with that in the first half. Three top ten teams have gone down in college football this weekend. Well, number four happened tonight. Kalen Balaj gets face-planted by JoJo McIntosh after a gain of one. Sun Devils have not beaten a top five team since 1996. They've lost ten straight since. They beat number one Nebraska here in 1996, a magical year for Jake Plummer and the Sun Devils. They went 11-1 under Bruce Snyder, went to the Rose Bowl. Todd Graham doesn't have that talented of a team compared to that group. But a chance to do the same. They've already beaten Oregon here this year. Wilkins on the rollout, looking deep, airing it out. And it is overthrown and nearly intercepted. Jordan Miller with a good play, and he was stride for stride with the great Nikhil Harry. It's great coverage in the back end by Washington. Trying to get a future first rounder in one on one. Not going to be the case because of the free safety from Washington getting over the top, making it a two against one in the secondary. Great pass breakup, but I like taking the shot there. And no pass interference. You thought that uh, that was a fair call? I thought it was clean. Tug to the jersey a little bit. A little bit. Balaz shifts into the backfield. Here comes pressure off the edge. Wilkins steps up. And trying to juke the defender. Well played by the Huskies. Joyner knocked him out of bounds. The area was in the area as well. Say that ten times fast. Here comes a punt. Big stop by Washington's defense. Stopping the run. Having great coverage on the deep ball. And they're allowing Manny Wilkins to break out for a half second before the hole closed. Great start to the second half for the Huskies. And you've got a game changer back there in Dante Pettis. That's what Washington needs right now, but Michael Sleep Dalton has not kicked it anywhere near him. And boy, dangerous play there by Pettis to feel that along the sideline. You spend all that time sometimes on special teams worrying about kicking it away from Pettis that you get a poor kick. It went 39 yards. Pettis limping a bit as he goes to the sideline. He's also their number one receiver. That's something to keep an eye on. This offense in the first half didn't have much explosiveness at all, either on the ground or through the air. Having Pettis not at 100% could really affect their efficiency in the passing game. Only nine attempts, but again, they didn't run a lot of plays, just 20 total plays run in that first half. Against an Arizona State defense that's given up 30 or more points 11 straight games. 
Here's Will Disley, a converted defensive lineman. You can tell by the number he wears. Gets a first down to the 49 of ASU. And that's a good play call by the offensive coordinator for Washington, Jonathan Smith. Get Browning out of the pocket. Have a little misdirection where you're faking the run to the left. You slip the tight end out to the right. Easy completion. And a nice gain on first down. Browning, everybody covered downfield, and wow, he gets drilled by Christian Sam. And this secondary for Arizona State has struggled for a calendar year to stop anybody, but the receivers for Washington were covered downfield. And there was nowhere to go with the football. I mean, you look on the outside, on the perimeter, no one up the middle, no check down. Browning had to run with it. And he gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage for the fourth sack of the game. They are 15th in the country, Arizona State, averaging three sacks per game. Coleman, and here comes a reverse. Ahmed gets a block from Browning, and Ahmed is free, and he's going to take it to the house. Touchdown, Savan Ahmed, the freshman. There is a penalty marker down at the 38-yard line. It's a 50-yard run if it stands. Holding offense. 10-yard penalty. Replay. Second down. That's on the left guard, Jesse Sosby. You can see the left guard is who they're going to get. With that left hand locked on, clear as day. When you have penetration by the defensive lineman, and that's what Arizona State excels at, getting penetration, it often results in linemen hanging on for dear life. That was the case there. Wiping out a big touchdown play for Washington. Browning, again, everybody covered, so Browning takes off, but he's got Green in front of him and slides close to the first down. Again, it's where the ball is, not where the feet are when you slide like that, but he did get enough to move the sticks. Best drive so far tonight for Washington. And you know, Greg, that is what Jake Browning's got to start looking at more often. If he doesn't feel good and that clock's going off, he's sneaky athletic. He's going to get taken the front door on multiple occasions now to expose that back end that's covering deep and keeping the ball in front of him. Browning, little dump off pass here to Gaskin. They're trying to get him any way they can. The football out to the 34 and Gaskin, almost 600 rushing yards coming in, eight touchdowns, two receiving touchdowns, but he's been quiet. Picks up a handful there. And so far here early in the second half, you've seen three plays that were somewhat misdirection. You saw the first play of the second half on the throw to Disley. You saw the reverse that was called back, and then right there getting Gaskin involved on the short completion. Misdirection clearly a point of emphasis here in the second half for offensive coordinator Jonathan Smith. Straight handoff here. Gaskin walloped by Christian Sam. Third down and four or five here. Four minutes gone by in the third. You got to think this is potential four down territory for Washington. Given their struggles when it comes to kicking field goals, you got to think you have two downs to get three and a half yards. So don't be surprised if they run it here on third and three. And they're 5 of 10 total on field goal tries this year. Browning will throw it on third and three. But again, everybody covered, and Browning's pass incomplete. Tried to hit Pettis. It would be about a 50-yard field goal. Tristan Viscano, the kicker, as long as 50, or excuse me, 42. And we were watching him in warm-ups, and boy, it was, it was ugly. Both Viscano and Soderberg were wide left, wide right. Much shorter distances than this, so they'll go for it. Never a doubt. He didn't even buckle his chin strap. You knew that this is four down territory for the Huskies and a huge play for Arizona State's defense. And 
Chris Peterson calls a timeout. The play clock was down to three. Maybe didn't like the look that Arizona State gave them defensively. We'll see if they still go when we come back. All State is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating university's general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, All State has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Well, by far, this is the best drive of the night offensively for Washington against an Arizona State defense that is near the bottom nationally in just about every category. 42 yards the first six drives and 39 in this one, but they have a fourth down and three at the ASU 32-yard line. A lot of shifts and motions with the Huskies. And Browning will throw, looking, and has a completion. That's the right guy to throw it to. Hunter Bryant with a first down grab. Great job by Jake Browning here. Look at him start to his right. Doesn't like it. Works back through the progression. First progressions to the right. Second progressions over the football. Then he finds Bryant as his outlet number three. They call that spacing. Right there, that's the play call. It was perfectly executed by the junior who has run that play one million times yeah. over the course of his career. Yeah. And that uh, true freshman, Hunter Bryant, despite his age, might be the most talented offensive player other than Miles Gaskin. On first down, Browning to throw again. And on a back shoulder attempt, going down to grab it as Pettis. He got it before it hit the turf at the 11-yard line, a 13-yard pickup and a first down. Yeah, if I'm Washington, I'm hurrying up to the football. So I don't want the boot to take a look at this. Although it looked like he caught that. It looked like his hands were underneath it. But it was close, and you know they're going to take a look at it. That's exactly what they'll do here. The ruling on the field is a completed catch for a first down. The previous play is now under replay review. Keep in mind as you watch this, even if the ball does touch the turf, if you control it, if you have possession of it, it's still a completion. You can see, I mean, he's got the ball. It doesn't move. Might touch the grass, but... Still got control, it seems. Yeah, it appears as though he's got his hands around the football. And of course, it has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the ruling on the field. Based on the angles that we've seen to this point, I'd be a little bit surprised if they were to overturn this one. I'm with you because it was ruled a catch on the field. How about Jake Browning? I mean, this is what he does. Hangs in there when uh, everybody's covered several times on this drive. Gets the completion on fourth down to move the chains and then throws that back shoulder pass to Pettis. May not have been the best throw in the world, but still got it there. It was a safe throw. He doesn't have his fastball tonight, though, guys. I mean, it's it's a little off the mark. Usually anticipates so well. He's so accurate with the football. He's so decisive. And we haven't seen him dial in to this point of the game the way we have over the course of his career. He's got to pick up the accuracy a little bit and then be decisive. After review, after review, the ruling on the field of a catch stands. First down, Washington. So it'll be first down and 10 on the 11-yard line. Now Jake Browning, first true freshman quarterback in school history to start his first game. That was back in 2015 and then really burst onto the scene last year with 43 touchdown passes. He had six of them in two different Pac-12 games. He's got 14 this year. So not on the same trajectory, but his team's undefeated, the most important stat. He'll hand it off here to Coleman. Down close to the nine-yard line, grabbed at the uh, ankles by Jamarcus Rhodes. Second down. Washington just has not had success running it at all tonight. Outside of the reverse that got called back, that was about the only explosive run we've seen, and for good reason. There was a penalty on the play. They just haven't had a lot of fortune up the middle. Credit to these Arizona State defensive linemen. They're hanging in there at the point of attack. Now remember, this team averages 43 points per game. That's good for 10th in the country. They've been shut out so far. Browning off play action. Well defended by Arizona State. Browning rolls out and throws it away. Arizona State not fooled. 
What's the difference tonight? Why is it a, a defensive backfield that's been torched so many times over the last year against the best team in the Pac-12 and a playoff team from a year ago is playing so well? Well, they've done away with the pressures. The, hey, we're going to get home no matter what. We're going to leave our guys on islands, but we're going to get home with the pressure packages. We haven't seen any of that tonight. They're dropping off. They're playing conservative coverage, and they're covering extremely well so far in the first half and now halfway through the third. They can still get a first down. It's third down and eight. Browning, here's pressure. Browning running around, being chased by Christian Sam. And he elects to keep it and is out of bounds about a half yard short of the line of scrimmage and they'll bring on the field goal unit. And this is no gimme. Tristan Viscano is four of nine on the season. And they've got Von Soderberg who's actually going to kick this one. He's only attempted one. It was a 23 yarder. He made it. This will be a 27 yard try for Soderberg. And it's no good. He missed it wide to the left. Washington's kicking game remains a mess. Washington puts together its first drive of the game. They get stopped. Think they're settling for a field goal. And it's just a bit outside. The Sun Devils looking strong. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Dos Equis. Stay thirsty. Enjoy responsibly. And in part by Nissan. Premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Greg, you've got to get away from this. I'm not going to eat during a telecast. <laughs> you, you got to stop. You I got know. a long career ahead of you now. You're going to have to learn that. See what if I'm going to eat though? I'm going to have a dog and a burger like that with pepper jack cheese. No dairy, please. Kyle Williams out in space. There he goes past the 40 and up to the 43. So they get the stand on defense and they pick up 23 yards on the very next play after the missed field goal. Momentum is a powerful thing in college football. It carries over from the defense after the stop. Now into the offense with a great first play on the catch and run by Williams. Wilkins, long throw, got a receiver wide open. It's Jalen Harvey. Harvey dropped the ball after he put that big hit on Jordan Miller. And it was out of bounds. It's a first down at the 43 of Washington. Harvey, slow to get up. Arizona State's doing exactly what they need to do, and that's not to play, not to lose. They're keeping their foot on the pedal, doing all the things that they did in the first half. Really impressed with their ability to mount this and build off that defense. And Harvey, though injured on that play, has been a really important piece tonight for Arizona State. Yeah, he was pointing to that calf, and that calf was flexing, which tells me one thing. That calf is cramping, and that is painful. Our week six Monday night football matchup as the Colts in Tennessee to take on the Titans. Our coverage starts at Monday night countdown six Eastern on ESPN. The game is also available on ESPN two in Spanish. With Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville, Dave Pash here in Tempe where Arizona State looking to knock off a top five team for the first time in more than two decades. Looking to add to their 13 to nothing lead midway through the third quarter. On first down Wilkins. Gonna take a shot, throwing it deep. He's got a receiver in the end zone. It's there. Oh, but it's dropped by Jenkins. Incomplete. Another great deep ball by Wilkins. We've seen a couple of those tonight, but Jenkins couldn't complete the play. Oh, man. This is one that Manny Wilkins is want, gonna want to have back. 
because he could have made this throw about a second and a half earlier. And then Jenkins wouldn't have been concerned about getting his body down inbounds in the back of the end zone. That being said, I know you're a QB. You, you got to you you catch it. You got to catch it. If it hits your hands, that's a drop. And he's smiling about it. But man, that could have been a huge one if Wilkins would have gotten it to him just a hair earlier. Luke's being a quarterback as well, I'm sure going to agree with you as Wilkins just throws it away here. Oh, Harry was uh, being held there by Jordan Miller. But the pass uncatchable thrown out of bounds third and ten. Well let me let me just follow by saying Dave that if you throw the football earlier then the receivers not falling to the ground trying to catch it. Ah, right. You know I've argued more <laughs> with the two of you than I have with Bill Wall. More often than not we are going to be on the side of the quarterback in this particular yeah, case. It should have been caught. We're not disputing that. No doubt. Yeah. But timing and rhythm, and we talked about that with Wilkins. That's all on Ryan Jenkins. Catch the football. Third and ten. <laughs> Here comes a blitz. Wilkins hit and sacked. Taylor Rapp, the freshman of the year in the Pac-12 last year, makes a huge play to force a punt. Just pressure coming off the left-hand side. And you think Taylor Rapp had a good beat on the snap count? Man, he timed that perfectly. Absolutely no chance for the offensive line. He runs right around the left tackle and no chance for Wilkins as he gets sacked. Does Pettis have a green light anywhere on <laughs> yes, the field? Always. Especially when you're down, 13 zip. Always a green light with him. Sleep Dalton's try to kick it away from him each time. This one, though, Pettis is under, but he does signal for the fair catch, has it at the 13 yard line. Next Saturday, a big one in the Big Ten with college football playoff implications, certainly for Penn State. Michigan's already got a loss, struggled today at Indiana, won the game in overtime. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC, also on the ESPN app. Ohio State with a big win at Nebraska tonight. Buckeyes have looked really good since the Oklahoma game. I'll tell you what, they're coming on, man. They are really physical along the defensive front. That offense is starting to click and gel over the last month. So you wouldn't count them out for the playoff discussion? Absolutely not. They fake the pitch, and on the rollout, it's the tight end, Disley. Same player, around near the same play they ran to start this half out to the 20 for six yards. But Greg, this has been an offense that has had such a focus on the tight end position, the 12 to 13 personnel, two tight ends, three tight ends. And really, it hasn't been until now that we've seen them try to incorporate what has been their strongest position outside of Dante Pettis. A little undershoot route has been beneficial. They've hit it three times now in the second half. Arizona State bringing pressure here. It's picked up. Browning caught by Drew Sample for a first down at the 25-yard line. With Phil Bennett not happy on the sideline here with ASU with how they played that defensively. All over Latou. fiery guy man he's done a nice job over the course of his career defensively he's had his hands full with an inexperienced group but they're playing well tonight we got Sean McGrew here in the backfield Washington had a touchdown called back because of a holding on their last possession checking Ahmed the ball carrier he was the one that scored the touchdown on a reverse that got called back because of the penalty this one will stand it's a 16 yard gain for the freshman Savan Ahmed Ahmed's quick. Man, can he accelerate. You add him now to the backfield alongside Gaskin and Coleman. You have three players that all have a little bit different skill set. Now, he resembles Gaskin a little bit. I think he's a little faster. He is. Whereas Gaskin is a little bit quicker side to side. LeVon Coleman is back there now. They fake it to him. Browning, he'll take a shot down the field, going for Pettis, and he overthrew him. Kobe Williams in coverage. But Greg, I bet Jake Browning wishes he could have had that over again and led him across the field. They're disrupting his timing a little bit in the passing game. He's had to move off the spot. He's had to scramble a couple times. He's been hit. 
This Arizona State defense has made Jake Browning very uncomfortable to this point of the game. And as a result, his accuracy has suffered. Just hasn't been quite as dialed in as we usually see him. Washington has not won here since 2001. Second and 10, pressure coming. Browning gets it away. It was almost intercepted, then almost caught. Lenius couldn't come up with it, neither could Adams. Third and 10 for UW. Huskies 6 and 0, 3 and 0 in the Pac-12. Second straight year they've started 6 and 0 since the early 90s. But they're in trouble. Yeah, there's 20 minutes of game time left, but they're one of eight on third down. Arizona State will only rush a few guys. And Browning's pass, too tall for Pettis. How about the restraint again of Arizona State not to do what you know Todd Graham is dying to do, and that's send everybody, cover zero, right? He wants to bring the house, I can <laughs> promise you. But Phil Bennett now, he has taken over play calling duty, and they've gone with a little bit more conservative approach. And frankly, the onus is put on your defensive line when you drop back and play coverage, and that defensive line has responded to the challenge there. Browning continues to stay off the mark. With Fern has had one blocked already in this game. And this one will... Oh, it kicked right. Look, there was a force field on the goal line there and just pushed that thing right. Great punt by Whitford, 55 yards. But overall, the night for Washington has been about miscues. Here's the block by Hodges. Arizona State settled for a field goal after that. Here's the holding penalty on the Ahmed touchdown. It took away a score. Washington still got down the field, but then missed a 27-yard field goal. And the score remains 13-0. But Arizona if you're State up. If you're Washington, too, your defense is now on the field. They've played a little bit better in the second half. And you're on the sideline as an offense saying, guys, we're, we're one drive away from being back in this thing. So it, it certainly feels one-sided and all the momentum's with the Sun Devils, but we still have a lot of football left. This is where Vita Vea has made so many plays over the course of his career. Bellage wrapped up by Vieira at the line of scrimmage. Maybe even lost a half yard. Vieira, Vieira played that perfectly. Saw the run action, triggered immediately, and wrapped up a heavy 230-pound Kalen Bellage for lost yardage. You're looking at Vea there, number 50. How many times have we seen him make big plays defensively when Washington's needed one? This would be the time. No doubt about that. Put some pressure on Manny Wilkins. He's been quiet tonight. Wilkins rolling away from Vea and has to throw it away. He got pressured by Bowman in the end zone. I tell you, fellas, I don't think Vita Vea has been playing with the same motor and intensity that we've seen from him in the past. He, he hasn't collapsed the pocket. He hasn't been using his hands very well. He's played high. And this is an undersized Arizona State offensive front. He should be overwhelming guys in one-on-one -on -one situations. He just hasn't done that tonight. You're right, Tom. He's been a non-factor in this defense is only going to play as well as Vita Vea and Greg Gaines, number 99, play. They've been stagnant so far. Although they just ran away from him on that rollout, so I think they're still scared of him. Third and ten. They just get the playoff. Dangerous pass. Williams wrapped up immediately by Jordan Miller. So it's going to be fourth down. They'll have to punt from the back of their end zone. It'll be really interesting here because if you're Michael Sleep Dalton, the first thing you're worried about is just getting rid of it. Yeah. So how do you kick it away from Pettis? Well, you just try to kick it. Since the ball is on the right hash, you try to kick it to the left hash, try to get it outside the numbers. And if I'm Washington, I'm thinking I want to return it to the field, to their right, where they have a little extra green grass. As a result, you see Arizona State with two gunners on the left-hand side. Forget about Pettis right now. You just want to get the ball off. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like You're so worried about kicking it away from him. You just want to get rid of it. And Pettis has a shot. 
Arizona State bottles him off at the 40-yard line. They do a pretty good job against the all-time leader in punt returns for touchdowns in FBS history. Kalen Thomas on the stop, but Washington will start at the Arizona State 41-yard line. That was great coverage by Arizona State. Washington now playing the field position game. If I'm Washington and if I'm Jonathan Smith, the offensive coordinator, this is where I'd like to take a shot down the field. You have momentum, you have field position. This is where you try to go and put the dagger in by throwing it down the field. 88 yards already this quarter, more than they had at halftime. Gaskin straight ahead. Wrapped up by DJ Calhoun. Gaskin unable to get on track tonight, but he does get a good pickup of three or four there. As you look at Jonathan Smith. He's one of the best in the business. Now, he's not a household name nationally, but he should be. If you watch their personnel groupings, their formations, the way they feature players, he's doing it as well as anybody when it comes to play calling. You hear his name mentioned for potential openings in college football for a head coaching job. As Browning throws complete, there's Pettis. Inside the 25-yard line, 13 yards and a first down for Washington. They're going to go up tempo here. Browning to the air. Pettis again. Stiff arms his way for another first down to the 12. I'm surprised Washington hasn't employed tempo yet to this point of the game. They've used it randomly throughout the season. Arizona State, their hands on their, are on their hips defensively. If I'm them, I'm trying to ramp the tempo up. Browning almost intercepted. Lucas steps in front of Disley. Incomplete. Very dangerous here. He didn't see Lucas covering the flat to his right. And that could have very easily been 88 and out the gate the other way. So impressed, though, with the, the DBs for Arizona State. I mean, they were talking about John Humphreys missed the last three games as a wide receiver. They were talking about playing him at corner because of all the issues they have back there. But not tonight. Gaskin on second and ten. Weaving his way down to the seven-yard line. Be third and five for the Huskies. Inside two to play, and they're going to go no huddle here. You might think four down territory, knowing the field goal, field goal situation. Yep, already missed a 27-yarder. Gaskin. And ASU able to plug that hole at the four, about a yard and a half shy of a first down. You had to think they ran that play knowing they'd go if they didn't get it, right? That's what I would assume. I mean... No, their field goal unit has been a problem this year. They're, they're going to go here. for it. Uh, I mean, they're going to go for the field goal. I, I don't agree with this. I mean, now this is an extra point. It really is. But everything with Washington at this point of the season has been a struggle when it comes to their field goal unit. So keep a close eye here on the kicker's body language. Even if you make it, still a two-score game. You just missed from 27. This is a 21-yarder. Hits the upright. No good. I'm with you, though. I'm Chris Peterson. I'm saying enough of this. We, we got to go. If we're going to win this game. We're, we're not going to rely on our kicker. No more. And I feel bad for this young man. And you can see that left plant foot, very unsure, skittish, jumps up and down. Tries to hold the follow through, trying to guide it in there. And it wasn't meant to be. I just disagree with the call entirely. Knowing that he's struggled, as Kano struggled all season long. Soderberg, excuse me. And well, both have, both have they both have struggled. Yeah. And, and, and they tried Soderberg on the last one because Viscano was struggling. Right. They don't go back to Viscano. They stick with Soderberg, and he misses it again. And I don't know how you can be a championship caliber team if you're going to play that way in the kicking game. So Arizona State takes over on the 20-yard line. 
Here's Balazs. Again, they love him out in space. Good tackle in the open field by Bryant. So a gain of about three for Balazs. Arizona State will have to snap it one more time as Pettis talks to Soderberg and says, we still might need you. It's only 13 zip. Hang in there. Absolutely. Because even the extra point, if they were to get a touchdown, and based on be the distance on that last one, it certainly is no sure thing, even on an extra point. Well, look at that. Seven years since they were shut out through three quarters. And they reset the play clock. Looked like Arizona State was going to have to snap the football, but they will not. And they will take a 13-0 lead to the fourth quarter. A blackout here in Tempe at Sun Devil Stadium. The Devils have come to play. They've got number five in the ropes as we head to the fourth. It's been a chaotic weekend in college football. On Friday the 13th, two top 10 teams go down. Number 10 Auburn then blows a 20-0 lead earlier today. So you get three top 10 teams that lose. Number 11, number 12, and number 13 all survive barn burners. And number five is down 13-0. It is on defense as we start the fourth quarter here at Sun Devil Stadium. Here's Kalen Balaj getting away from Bryant. Turning it upfield, picking up a couple. Big third down here for Washington's defense. Arizona State trying to beat a top five team for the first time since 1996. Washington looking to stay unbeaten. 6-0, and 3-0 in the Pac-12 entering. And Washington's defense has done their job. After halftime, they've made adjustments and made life very difficult for Manny Wilkins and the Sun Devil offense. Big third down here. Balazs leaving the backfield. Washington backs off, rushes only three. Wilkins throws it away. And almost got intercepted. Connor O'Brien diving for that one. C.J. French love the intended receiver. So another punt for Arizona State. And that means another opportunity for Dante Pettis, who's got three returns for touchdowns this season, eight for his career. Tying the FBS record. His dad, Gary, former Major League Baseball player, now a coach with the Astros, are up 2-0 on the Yankees in the ALCS. Michael Sleep Dalton back at his 12-yard line to kick. Pettis racing over there to try to field it. He's got it at the 30-yard line. There's a penalty flag down, though, and Pettis has no running room. They've really done a good job on punt coverage tonight, ASU. That flag back at the 22-yard line near the line of scrimmage. There's actually two markers. And if that, for some reason, was offside on Washington, it might come down to a measurement because it's fourth and five. Illegal formation, offense, five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down, Washington. Wouldn't you have him re-kick it? No, I would. I, you have the best returner in FBS history. And you just take it at the end of the run? That doesn't make any sense to me. I'm with you. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by Geico, part of Dos Equis Tailgate Week. Chris Peterson said, you know what, we're going to make him kick it again. So they enforced the penalty, and it's a re-kick. I, I think Mark Duddy, the referee, didn't actually even check with Chris Peterson. He made that call pretty quickly. So during the commercial, they cleaned it up. First penalty of the night for ASU. We'll see if Pettis gets another crack at it. Sleep Dalton gathered that one, took him a little while, and it's right at Pettis. He muffs the kick, though. Scoops it up on his 30-yard line, and they wrap him up at the 32. That actually worked out better for ASU the second time. Jamarcus Rhodes running down the field for ASU. Wow. And the first time tonight, We've seen ASU punt the ball to the middle of the field. Every other punt has been to the wide side of the field. That time right down the middle, I think Pettis knew that he had an opportunity. And sure enough, takes his eyes off of it and results in the muff. Keep in mind as you look at this score, Arizona State has given up 30 or more points in 11 straight games. That's the longest active streak in the country. Imagine going from that to shutting a team out. 
the number five team in the country, no less, who's averaging 43 points per game. Still a lot of time left, though. Browning steps up. Running out of real estate. And thrown out of bounds by Christian Sand. No gain. So Arizona State, a team that, again, just defensively struggled all year, but it's working tonight, whatever they're doing. I tell you what, Phil Bennett has done a tremendous job. And credit to his players. Right there, you saw Jake Browning signaling because he thought pressure was coming, and then all of a sudden they drop out. I mean, they have had Jake Browning uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically rattled for a majority of the night. Browning on second and nine gets hit as he throws deep. And they get pressure. JoJo Wicker drilled Browning. That's why the ball came out the way it did. Well, Greg and Dave, you know, one of the things that stands out about this pressure is they're getting in his kitchen. And you said he's rattled, Greg. He's rattled because he doesn't have one-on-one -on -one timing routes he's accustomed to having because of the change-ups on the back end with Phil Bennett's group. Tom, he's had miscommunications. He's had inaccuracies. We're not used to seeing this from a guy that finished sixth in the Heisman a year ago. Doesn't have his left tackle. Trey Adams got hurt in the first half, has not returned. Andrew Kirkland is in there replacing him. Guarding the blind spot. Third and ten. Browning looking for anybody. Nobody's open. Browning running in circles and goes down to the 18-yard line. Smallwood, George Lee eventually on the stop. Just a great job by Arizona State in the secondary. Look, there's nowhere to go with the football. Jake Browning's having to move in the pocket and negotiate the rush. He's outside the pocket here, though. He's got to cut his losses. He just lost a first down and a half because you take a sack as opposed to throwing it away. He's got to be smarter when a play breaks down and the defense wins. Arizona State had only 10 guys on the field. They just ran their 11th out there. Excellent punt. Newsom backs up. Newsom reversing field. This could get interesting. Past the 40-yard line. Just ran out of room there. They had that set up. Good return. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And in part by AT&T. Well, Arizona State has won games against top 10 schools two of the last four years. 2014 against Notre Dame, 2015 against UCLA, but they have not beaten a top five team since 1996, Jake the Snake, Plummer and company knocked off number one Nebraska. Won their first 11 games before losing in the Rose Bowl. Manny Wilkins has been solid tonight. Another game in which he's protected the football. Only two interceptions thrown this season. But the offense for ASU in this half has not been as good. They've punted their last five possessions. Short throw from Wilkins. Here's Richard on the catch, and immediately Bieria is there. But Richard able to keep his balance and not go down. Out to the 47 instead of no gain. It's a five-yard pickup. What an effort by Richard. I mean, it looked as, there, as though there was nothing there. He just spun right out of two tackles. Wilkins pumps the short throw. Now comes back to it on the sideline. And Harvey, who's back out there, he mentioned the cramp that he had in his calf earlier. He's about two yards short of the first down. Trying to get some tempo going offensively, too. They haven't really been doing much in the second half offensively, trying to energize this group. And now they're slowing it down because they understand the importance of this third and two. Even if they don't get it, though, a chance to, again, flip the field. That Washington offense has done nothing. 
Wilkins will throw it, and it's caught for a first down. Nikhil Harry to the 33-yard line. They pick up 17 yards on third and two. Really nice play call by Billy Napier. Go with a little spider two wide banana with a Z hook. <laughs> and as a result, the future first rounder, Nikhil Harry, is open underneath for the conversion. All right, so break that down for me. Give, give me the spider. Why is it called spider two? Why? Spider's protection, right? Spider two is the protection. You have the fullback in the flat. You have the Y on the corner route, which is a banana. And then you have the Z hook right underneath. Basic football. You saw Nikhil. Uh, Harry's grandmother in attendance. More on that here in a moment as that pass is caught as Harvey stumbles to the 30-yard line. Nikhil Harry was raised by his grandmother in the Caribbean, St. Vincent. She brought him all the way here. Felna Harry did to Chandler, Arizona. We went to high school and has a big-time future in front of him. And, Tom, I know you loved him as a prep player as well. Yeah, he was our number one ranked receiver coming out of that class in 2016 group and was a great basketball player. Again, another one of those two-sport guys that you love to recruit. Shattered a backboard in high school. Dunking the ball. Certainly did. Second and eight. Here's Harry. Played beautifully by Washington. Tevis Bartlett on the stop. It's going to bring up a big third down here. We talked about breaking a backboard. Look at that thing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> they say he's about 220. They say he's gotten up to 230, but now he's back where he needs to be. And, man, he moves so well. Very athletic, great body control. He's got a very bright future. It's all muscle, I'll tell you that. No denying that. He is special. <laughs> We saw him just on, on a simple out in the first quarter go way up the ladder to make a great catch and then balance to get the foot down. Washington bringing pressure here on third down. Ball thrown deep and out of bounds. So it's fourth and six on the 29. Your kicker, Brandon Ruiz, has already made a 52-yarder. And they'll bring him on here to try to extend the lead to 16 to nothing. Big kick right here. Obviously, field goals are likely out for Washington the remainder of the game, given their struggles in that area, their special teams. Now you potentially make it a two-score game with two two-point conversions. This is a huge kick for Ruiz. But it's no good, and Washington will have decent starting field position with 9.04 to go. Number five, not done yet. Washington has been its own worst enemy in this game. Trite but true. Here's the block punt. They didn't even block Hodges, and he got to Whitford. And then here's the hole. They negated a touchdown by Ahmed on the first possession of the third quarter. And then two terrible kicks, 27 yards. And then this one from 21 off the upright. So instead of it being 13-6 or maybe 13-13, still 13-zip. Gaskin gets nine yards, though, on first down. So it's been a crazy weekend, but not as crazy October 30th, 2010, the last time Arizona State won a game where it shut out the opponent, and the last time Washington was shut out as they get the first down here with Gaskin out to the 44. So it's been seven years for Washington since it was shut out, and seven years since Arizona State blanked its opponent. First and ten on the UW 44-yard line. And a big hit on Gaskin by Christian Sam. Short game. And now you start to see Washington in a little bit of a two-minute tempo, knowing that possessions could be hard to come by with under 8.30 to play. Browning gets hit as he throws, and that took something off of it, it appeared. Lucas breaking up the pass intended for Pettis. It was Latu that got to the quarterback. They've sacked him a handful of times, hit him a handful of times more. And it's third and six. Latu has been everywhere tonight for this Arizona State defense, constantly harassing Jake Browning. And a huge play here for Washington. Had some success on the first couple plays running it. 
Now in a third and six, you have to think they're thinking of converting through the air. Therefore, you got to find your best receiver. And that's number eight at the top of your screen. And a timeout called here. By Washington. So that leaves the Huskies with one. 8-14 remaining, 13-0 ASU. Well, the last time Arizona State beat a top five team it was also a shutout. Jake Plummer and the Sun Devils beat Nebraska 19-0. Here's Plummer hitting Keith Poole for a 25-yard touchdown. Derek Rogers getting the sack on Scott Frost. That ends Nebraska's 26-game win streak. They've lost 10 in a row since, and they've got Washington in third down and six on the Husky 48-yard line. Browning, everybody covered again. Browning steps up, trying to find a running lane. Now backs up and throws complete to Pettis. What a play by Browning to keep that alive. It's a great job by Browning and a great job by Pettis. Uncovering, seeing that his quarterback was in some trouble. They tried to go with some underneath mesh routes thinking that Arizona State was going to play some man-to-man. -man. They go zone. Browning makes a play for the Huskies, a big one at that. Inside eight minutes to go. Washington with just one timeout. Down two scores. Straight ahead run. Gaskin getting a good chunk, about seven, before he's brought down by Christian Sam. Comes that tempo. Gaskin again, this time running right, and he's able to get outside and get the first down. Stays in bounds. Finally taken down by Wicker. Great hustle by a defensive lineman, because if Wicker doesn't keep hustling, that's a touchdown. No doubt about it. Great hustle from Wicker. This Arizona State team, yeah, they're going to burn a timeout here. I, I was about to say, this Arizona State defense is starting to breathe pretty heavy. They're not the deepest group in the world, so it's understandable that after a long drive like this, utilizing tempo, they're a little bit worn out. All right, so Washington so far, look, there's still 724 left, but to this point, what, what does this say to you about the Huskies? They have to figure out a way to be effective running the football, and they have not been able to do that. Jake Browning has been off the mark, and that's a big reason why I think the running game's struggling too. I mean, we're looking at Arizona State defensively that's known for pressure, that's known for bringing blitzes from all over the place. We haven't seen any tonight. We haven't also seen, we haven't seen Washington adjust to the coverage that they're playing. So I think they have to be more willing to adjust too, which we haven't seen tonight, and that's really uncharacteristic for Chris Peterson and his staff. Well, the other thing, Arizona State's defense is known for being bad, but tonight they're not. They have shut out Washington to this point. Again, you go 11 straight games, giving up 30 points or more, and now you've got the number five team blanked. But they're on the cusp of the red zone, and Browning's going to take a shot. Incomplete. Hunter Bryant mad at himself for not coming down with that ball. And that was a well-thrown football and would have been a great catch by Bryant. It's right where you want to throw it if you're Jake Browning. One-on-one -on -one coverage, maybe your best pass-catching option from the slot. He's not able to convert in the end zone. That would have been huge for the Huskies. Missed two short field goals when they've been down here earlier. Not thinking field goal now, obviously. Second and ten. Gaston finds a hole. They're running the ball better now the last couple drives. That's about six yards. The next snap will come around the seven-minute mark, third down. There's movement on the right side of the offensive line. That's exactly what they needed to. Arizona State needed this to Ball slow down. Start. Offense, number 58. Five-yard penalty, third down. Instead of third and four, it's third and nine. You can see just the right tackle coming out of his stance a little bit early. Man, that's a big penalty. 
You have third and manageable, now becomes third and long, and this is where some of those pressure packages from ASU start to reveal themselves. And there's nobody deep right now. Everybody on the line of scrimmage for Arizona State, and they bring everybody. Browning, lob ball, Pettis, knocked away, incomplete. Kobe Williams broke it up. Pettis wants a flag, but won't get it. So fourth and eight. We'll see if they go for it here. You would think they would. A lot of contact, but I think it's a good no call. Both players trying to make a play on the football. Right because there for the first time, we see Arizona State bring the pressure. Let's see if they do it again on fourth and long. Got to be thinking Pettis once again in a one-on-one -on -one situation down here. They have to get to the 11, and again, nobody back. No safety deep. Now you see him back two guys away. Browning looking, throws, caught first down. Quinton Pounds on the catch. It looked like Chase Lucas slipped when Pounds came out of his break. It's first and goal, and they go up tempo. Huge pickup as the game. As Washington still in this one because they got that conversion. But here's a big takedown by JoJo Wicker on the running back Coleman for a loss of three or four. Wicker just completely unblocked. Latu shaken up though for Arizona State. He's been really good tonight. That's a big injury. Latu's been moved around. There's been some injuries in that front. He's played a few different positions. And he's been a force for the Sun Devils defense tonight. Hope he's okay. Let's take a look at the Duluth hardest working player. You could pick a number of guys on defense for Arizona State. AJ Latu. Here's the guy we're going to go with. He's shaking up on that last play, but man, he has been in the backfield a whole bunch. And again, we mentioned this in the first half. It's worth repeating, Greg. They've taken their defensive lineman because of injury. They lost Karan Crump, their best pass rusher, to a knee injury. So they've moved everybody around. Guys that were playing nose tackler moved to defensive end. Defensive ends have been moved to linebacker. But it's working tonight. There's it Crump. is. You see Crump right there on crutches he's a star when it comes to pass rushing they miss him defensively but you have to give credit to arizona state's front with how they've played how they've affected the quarterback how they've limited the big plays on the ground and they haven't rotated at all and here we are in the fourth quarter and all starting 11 have been out there the entire game their conditioning also i think needs to be recognized because they've hung in there against a very physical football team and they've been up to the task. You know, Greg, they're thin and they're undersized and they have held up wonderfully tonight. And I think a lot of it is because of the scheme. Second and goal, 13th play of the drive here, Tom, on the 11-yard line. Browning has a ton of time. And now we'll run it, and Browning to the five. Browning close to the goal line, and down just shy of Pater. Wren with a tackle, third and goal from inside the one, and there's another Sun Devil, Christian Sam, that's banged up, so that'll stop the clock. Let's see if he gets in. No, you see that knee going down with a yard still prior to the goal line. That's a good spot from the officials. Jake Browning leaving it all on the field tonight. That was a big hit and he knew it was coming. Sam banged up on the play. Greg, you know, down the stretch here, you're under six minutes and they're going to need this defense, and they're going to need every body they have. They cannot afford these types of injuries from a depth standpoint. If Washington were to score here and get a bit of a momentum swing, ASU needs to be at full health. Sam has got 11 tackles, eight solo stops. They'll have to come out for at least this play. Third and goal. And you mentioned Browning leaving it all out there. I mean, this is what he does. This is how he is successful. Not the biggest guy in the world, not the best arm in college football, but he just makes plays. He knows how to get it done. 
And man, has he gotten it done time and time again over the last couple seasons. Gaskin is behind the Browning here on third and goal. Going to be a quarterback sneak. And Browning, no signal yet. Now there's a signal. Touchdown, Washington, finally. And no penalty flag down. It took almost 55 minutes, but the Huskies finally score. Just the quarterback sneak. I'll tell you what, it's fun to score touchdowns, but that was that was a physical push at the end. And this is no sure thing here, right? given their struggles in the kicking game. And it's Viscano that they're going to bring on here. It was Soderberg that missed the two short field goals earlier. Viscano has missed two extra points, and he's four of nine on field goals. Did look pretty, but it's good. And it's 13-7 Arizona State. Plenty of time for Washington. They don't have to go for the onside kick here, necessarily. This game could easily be tied, but you got a missed field goal of 27 yards by Soderberg, wide to the left. And then here on a 21-yarder, off the right upright. I don't know if there's any more pressure on any collegiate student athlete than on a kicker. Because when they miss, they hear about it. People get nasty on social media to these young men. First kicker on an AP top five team to miss two kicks. That distance. The last one, believe it or not, was on Boise State. In 2010, and who was the coach of that team? Chris yeah, Peterson. Peterson. Yep. But are you with me that in terms of the kickers and the pressure they face? No and doubt. The, the and unfair a... criticism. I understand. I mean, they, they, they miss them, but it's definitely it's a thankless job. It really is. Arizona State will start at the 25-yard line. After we're done here, Stan Barrett and Linda Cohn, they're waiting. They will have. The latest on college football after uh, our Pac-12 after dark game, Herb Street, who was uh, in Tuscaloosa tonight for Alabama's dominant performance against Arkansas. And Joe Madden, the Cubs manager, tossed from the game against the Dodgers. Take game one. Greg's Dodgers. You can smile. That's I, okay. I'm, a, I'm a Dodger fan. I would be lying if I didn't watch the <laughs> majority of the first five innings prior to this one getting kicked off. And the oh, last four on, the, uh, on, on your phone over there. <laughs> First down for Arizona State on the 25-yard line. Again, just one timeout for Washington. And ASU going to throw the ball here. Wilkins pitches it ahead. Richard got to stay in bounds, but he doesn't. Went on inside the point of the game where they start the clock on the snap. So... Once they get the ball set, they'll wind it. But still, I'm a little surprised Arizona, Arizona State's throwing the ball. On a drop back, too. The quick passing game's been very effective for them at times. And they've had moments where they've run the ball effectively, too. Surprised to see a standard drop. And it seems like a run first situation. Another pass play. That one's on the money for a first down. Well, when he got to Keel Harry, might as well drop back and sling it. Game of 20. Quick game, quick game, quick game. That's Arizona State's bread and butter offensively. Manny Wilkins, not great on the intermediate throws. Throws a nice deep ball, especially to the right-hand side. But it's got to come out of his hands quickly. Right there it does. And he hits Harry in stride for a big game. And if Todd Graham says, you know what, I can't blitz like I want to in defense. We're going to throw it here when we normally might be running the ball so I can gamble a little bit here. First down on the 44 of Arizona State. They take that clock down to four and a half. Out in space to Williams. Washington trying to strip the ball. They blow it dead at the 48, a four-yard pickup. Arizona State will take it down inside four minutes. They get a couple more first downs, three first downs. He might be over. 
very well could be. And if you're a ball carry in this situation, you don't fight for extra yards. You go down immediately. Right there, you saw the receiver trying to fight for a couple extra. Go down as opposed to risking a potential fumble as Washington tries to go for the football. Wisely taking the game clock down and the play clock inside five before the snap. Now they'll run it. Richard able to find a hole and he gets the first down. And Demario Richard, not the tallest guy, 5'9", but he's 220 and he's got power. How about Vita Vea up front too? About blew this thing up. But Richard finds a crease. And how about his offensive lineman, Sam Jones, the left guard, doing a little bush push right there <laughs> to push him over the first down line. Great job by the offensive lineman getting that extra surge. They've already taken two and a half minutes off the clock on this drive, and they're in Washington territory. Again, they take the play clock down inside five before snapping. Richard wrapped up after a gain of two by Miles Bryant. And they don't have to snap until about 220. And you would imagine if Washington stops him here and it's third long, then Chris Peterson will use his last time out. Yeah, and you look at Washington having to call timeout earlier in the half, now only having one remaining timeouts, especially like this, are like gold. And they're as valuable as anything. And yet, because of miscommunications and misaligned players, they had to burn a couple. And now here they are on defense with Arizona State. A lot of momentum. Arizona State will take a timeout. So that's smart there. They take the play clock down. They use their timeouts. been a great night of college football Pac-12 on ESPN and what a weekend now, you said it yesterday man we we're meeting with Todd Graham before and you said I think this is going to be a chaotic weekend in college football yeah. and Arizona State on the verge of making it four top 10 teams to get upset this weekend yeah you hit that week seven wall you really do as a, as a team and especially as a team that wears the target on your chest as a result you've seen three teams in the top 10 fall One's on the ropes here with Washington. It's a tough burden to play against teams that are bringing their A game against you every single week. And week seven is about where you see it, especially when there were no ranked versus ranked matchups. Every time you think right. the weekend's going to disappoint, it never does. It's college football. It's the greatest game in the world. What's the most surprising one? Syracuse beating Clemson or Absolutely. Cal blowing out Washington State? No, it's Syracuse and Clemson. I, I, I've watched Washington State, and I, I think they're good. I, I really do. But they're going to go as Luke Falk goes. And Luke Falk, last night, from a decision-making standpoint, was very disappointing. But Clemson that guy's looked disappointed. Complete. Clemson looked complete prior to last night's events. Second and nine for Arizona State. Again, just one timeout left for Washington. Here's Wilkins keeping it. He hurdles a defender, which he's done several times. He'll come up three yards shy of the line to gain, and Chris Peterson will use that last timeout. He's, he's done this three or four times as he leaps over Jordan Miller. That got him an extra three or four yards. Absolutely. We're in hurdles in high school, and that's just how they teach it right there. <laughs> that back leg's tucked. And look at Miller. It's not like Miller yeah. was on the ground. I mean, he, he Miller was almost standing straight up. Yeah. Granted, the, the hurdles aren't six foot one. Like Miller, there he is. Boom. These are in other games, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> this is not tonight. <laughs> he did not change jerseys uh, multiple times. Andy Wilkins right there, man. That is a microcosm of his development this year. Smart understanding what he needs to do for this team to be successful. Of course, had a big quarterback competition with Blake Barnett, the transfer from Alabama in the offseason. Most people just wrote in, Blake Barnett is the guy. Right. Sure enough, Manny Wilkins was having none of it. He's been efficient tonight when Arizona State has needed it most. A young man that's been through so much. He told a story about he used to come home to his house when he was growing up in the Bay Area, and he'd get robbed several times. Uh, and his dad was in prison. His dad eventually passed away from a drug overdose. Manny bounced around from city to city, but he's found a home here in Tempe. 
And he's got a chance to knock off number five as they throw it here on third and five. It's ruled a catch and a fumble recovered by Steve Miller, the right guard. It's fourth down, and they lose yardage. What are they doing? Now they're going to say incomplete. The clock is stopped regardless. But now we'll see if Todd Graham goes for it. The on the field is an incomplete pass. Fourth down. So that's about a four-yard difference because the ball spotted now in the 37 rather than the 41. But why would you throw the ball in this situation? It's not about yardage. It's about time. Yeah. Because really. you would have first down, the game's over. Washington cannot stop the clock. You take a few knees and the game's over. They ran that exact same play earlier in the game on a fourth and one. They know that they're going to have a tough time running it between the tackles. It is an incomplete forward pass, fourth down. Against defensive tackles like this. You're Therefore, right. Therefore, you give it to Harry on the perimeter. You see if he can fall forward. He gained three, ironically yeah. enough, when they called that play earlier, Tom. And yeah. I don't have a problem with the play call. It's a safe, easy completion, just poorly executed. Well, it, but let's also remember that you don't have to get the first down. If you stay in bounds and you don't convert, the clock still runs. But guys, why not just just hand it off if you don't yeah, get it? Yeah, the clock runs. Right, you punt Game with one fifteen. Please reset the clock to two oh four. I mean, you, you punt with one twenty, and now you got two oh four. They added time back on, but you run that play a hundred times over the yeah. course of a season. A hundred. And you want to know what the completion percentage probably is? Ninety-eight percent. I would imagine. Yeah. It's a ball behind the line of scrimmage. How about this decision here? To your by the biggest way. receiver. They're going to go for it at fourth and three. Does it surprise you whatsoever? Uh, in this situation, yeah. Be alert for a quick kick, too. And but I get it. You get the first down, the game's over, but you at least try to draw them off sides at the very minimum. They do have a timeout left, so they can take the play clock down here. They do snap it, and Wilkins will throw it, gets hit, and the pass. Oh, my goodness, it's caught! How did he catch that? C.J. French lobbed inside the 10, first and goal, and that might be the game. How on earth did that ball get through? Wow. Almost off the helmet of JoJo McIntosh. He wasn't throwing it to him, guys. No. Manny Wilkins living right. Look at that thing. He's trying to throw it to Kalen Balaj. Yep. A wow. seeing eye 30 yard pass, first and goal. Wow. I mean, when you're living right, you're living right. Oh, oh, oh man. I mean, the fact, first of all, they went for it on fourth and three. Almost in midfield, Dave. Right, I mean, you turn it over there. You watch yeah. it in the short field with no timeouts, but that's Todd Graham. It's almost like he's saying, you know what, I can't blitz like I want to on every down, so we'll take our, our risks on offense. Yeah, and keep in mind, too, last time Washington had the football, they went right down the field and scored. Yeah. And their defense is gassed, Arizona State's defense is. I mean, they are... They are worn out. They don't substitute a lot. They don't have a lot of size. And as a result, they got run through pretty easily on that last drive by the Huskies. So you got to try to win it with your offense on the field, and I respect that decision. There's an injured Husky down. Jordan Miller. How about C.J. French Love, his second catch all year. We had last week Daryl Langham of Miami, right, didn't play really at all the entire game. He's in there for the go-ahead touchdown. Here's C.J. French Love. We haven't seen him out there very much in this game. And he makes the play of the game. And Arizona State can just take a knee three times. And Washington can't stop the clock. No timeouts left. It's really been the story of Washington all night, though, hasn't it, guys? It has. I mean, they had everything covered. Yep. If you look at the rush up front, they had four defensive linemen right in Manny Wilkins' lap as he released the football. And it goes through arms and hands and overheads, and sure enough, winds up in French Love's hands for the big conversion. We're just going to give you one look here at the injury uh, for 
Jordan Miller. We're, we're told it was pretty bad, and so that's why we showed you that angle. We didn't want to show you the uh, the other angle, which might upset some viewers. So uh, they're bringing the card out for Jordan Miller, but it it, it really looked bad. Yeah, it did. It really, you hate it for him. Starting corner. They have a air cast on his leg. Never want to speculate, but it's never good. And you see that air cast applied. So how about this? Four top ten teams. Two top five teams going down 24 hours. I know they love to bring that Washington State flag everywhere, but... And for Washington, no, they don't play USC. They still have to go to Stanford. They got Washington State in the Apple Cup, obviously. That game is in Seattle. Be really interesting. We still got a few weeks to go, a couple weeks before uh, the college football playoff rankings are out, but it will be interesting to see the AP poll after this week as, uh, again, they're going to help Jordan Miller here. Look at the uh, class move there. Manny Wilkins down there. Making sure Jordan Miller's okay. last year three guys out of their secondary to the NFL Kevin King Buda Baker and Sidney Jones all drafted in the first 43 picks they lost Byron Murphy earlier this year to injury and now Jordan Miller so that's secondary depleted for the final handful of games in the regular season it's Byron Murphy there that's big in the question mark for Washington, how would they replace that elite talent in the back end? They're great up front, and they're great in the front seven. That back end remains a bit of a question mark, but just glad to see he's okay and up onto the card. Just hate seeing injuries like this. Greg coming into this weekend, 13 unbeaten teams in college football. Five have already lost. This would be number six. And again, all Arizona State has to do here, because Washington can't stop the clock, and you got a 40-second play clock, has just taken knee three times, and this game's over. What are the chances they throw it? <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, I wouldn't rule out a handoff. <laughs> As uh, Jordan Miller lifted up on the card, uh, some of the Arizona State fans uh, applauding. The young man and trying to encourage him. Well, you said earlier you thought this was the best two and three team in the country. And Arizona State offensively has been good all year, but tonight it was their defense. Yeah. Think about it, 11 straight games, giving up 30 or more, the longest active streak in the country, and they hold this Washington offense to seven. What a performance. I mean, it's really been incredible, for lack of a better word. They've tackled well. They've rallied to the football. They haven't allowed big plays. Every yard that Washington's gained, they've earned. Now, they had some fortuitous bounces, like a holding penalty that wiped a touchdown out. A couple missed field goals against them. They always say it's better to be lucky sometimes than be good. Well, I can tell you one thing. They were lucky tonight, and this Arizona State team, they're good. They're going to be a tough out for teams in the future. You think about their schedule, I mean, they're two and three, but they lose to Stanford. I don't think anybody's shaking their head at that performance. Stanford's a really good football team, proving so again tonight. Lose to San Diego State, one of the best teams in the group of five. Lose to Texas Tech, top 25 team entering today. There will be no handoffs. There will be no passes. They are in victory formation. 
They've got Balaj lined up 15 yards in the backfield in case there is a botched snap. They'll just have to do it twice more, and this game will be over. You know, Greg, I, I think going forward for Arizona State, if they learn something tonight, it's that they can play smarter on defense by how they choose to play defense. Because the criticism here, even going back to the beginning of the tenure of Todd Graham, is, yeah, they love the pressure, they love to blitz you, but as a result, they also bust a lot, and they give a bunch of big plays up on defense. And by changing things up, and if they keep it rolling, they'll be an entirely different team down the stretch. Wilkins takes a knee. He'll have to do it one more time. Four top ten teams in 24 hours. Started last night. Syracuse beating Clemson. And then Cal blowing out Washington State. Auburn today up 20 to nothing. Blows the lead. Loses to LSU. And now Todd Graham in Arizona State. Got to knock off Washington. One more snap to go. And you got to wonder for Todd Graham. There's been a lot of talk here locally. If Todd Graham is going to be in his final season at Arizona State. This certainly helps his cause to stay by beating Washington. And there it is. Wilkins takes a knee. The Devils upset number five, Washington. First win over a top five team for ASU in 21 years. We will have more from Sun Devil Stadium coming up. Manny Wilkins played so well, so efficient. Two short field goals missed by Washington, the difference. A 27-yarder and a 21-yarder. And Arizona State wins it 13-7. Washington falls to 6-1. ASU goes to 3-3. Three three. Two top five teams. Four top ten teams. Number 11, Sir Pike. Number 12, Oklahoma almost went down as well. So did number 13. For Tom Luganville, Greg McElroy, our entire crew on Dave Pash, stay tuned. Sports Center is coming up in 15 seconds.